Ann BJ, and I'm Audubon and Home Ambassador at Loudoun Wildlife Conservancy, and I've been winter sowing a few years and wanted to share my uh, opinion on what works for me. So you can use all your recycled um, containers, uh, milk jugs, quart jars, anything that's translucent. Don't use things that are like white, white milk jugs don't work. Things where light can't get through. And then you'll have plants that turn into this. So when like this liatris uh, turns to seed, I get excited in the fall and harvest that. And then we have a coneflower here that is not truly native, but works really well. So I also harvest that. And I do use Prairie Moon as a resource for seed information that I think uh, you would like to use. Um, cold stratification numbers and what the seeds look like. Um, but I do want to share these series of videos in this section to tell you how to uh, moisten the soil and prepare the containers. Now I'll show you how you prepare your containers um, by putting holes in the top. Um, this is a Costco uh, quart soup container and I'm putting holes all through the top to allow water transpiration throughout the process. Um, during the winter. So holes in the top to allow the water in and to evaporate some and then um, holes in the bottom to allow the water to come out so it doesn't get too wet during the winter. And that's how you see it, top and the bottom. When I initially got started I would always use um, gallon milk jugs. So again, see it's translucent, so you carefully, very carefully use a utility knife or scissors to cut all the way around, but leave a hinge on it. It makes a little mini greenhouse to use. So that's where the soil goes and the water goes in and transpires out the top and will go out the bottom after you put holes in later. Again, very important to not have colored containers. Now I'll show you the other way you can do it. Instead of drilling carefully, you can solder carefully. You put holes in the bottom, make sure you're outside and you don't smell the fumes. I would say it's pretty toxic, um, but it gets the job done very quickly. Um, holes in the bottom and the top. And then I also show you how easy it is to do it in the milk jug container for holes in the bottom there and you see you put a bunch so it has lots of um, holes to let the water out and there they are in the bottom and you have your hole in the top for the water to come in and out. The soil and the moisture from the very beginning and through the process are very very important for the seeds to grow. You can use potty mix that you have um, as long as there's perlite or vermiculite involved um, to help with the moisture control, but I really like the Pro Mix. That's my choice um, because it has mycorrhizae in it that um, helps even more to promote seed growth. Many times I can emphasize this, that the soil needs to be very, very moist uh, for the biggest success. So here I'm just putting soil in the containers that have already been pre-drilled holes in the bottom. So they usually say about four inches, but um, that looks about it. You compress the soil a little bit and then it's ready to put seeds in later. And I'm doing the same thing in the milk jug, which I really like them because they're a little mini greenhouse uh, with the lid. And I do need to point out, I don't show this later, but after the seeds are in, you tape that edge so that it seals it up and the only hole um, and access to water and air is through that very small top of the milk jug. So there you're gonna put the seeds in next. I'll show you soon. I'm gonna repeat again and again that the soil has to be moist. When I first started doing this a few years ago, I was very flippant about, oh, it's just soil and it doesn't need to, it can be dry on the dry side. But we'll come to find out, um, the, if you have to add water later to it after it's sealed up, um, it can displace the seeds. 
and that's not what you're looking for. You put the seeds in, you compact it down, um, and you don't want pouring water over it to disturb them. So I found that out, and that's why I'm very careful. So now here I'm showing you uh, putting in liatra seed in there, um, sprinkling it around and pressing it down a little bit. And um, the liatris actually does um, need to have a little soil on top. And some seeds are surface sown. This is not one of them. So you put a little soil on top. And again, the soil should be pre-moistened. I think in this image here, it's a little bit on the dry side. I just wanted to show you. But make sure it's very, very moist and you'll have much better success. So there you go. It's ready to seal up and that is ready for the winter. Another thing I found out is that it is extremely important to label your seeds in many places. Um, use a permanent marker, something that's going to stay around, label it on the bottom, label it in multiple places because nothing is more upsetting when you get to the spring and the sun has made the words go away. Then you don't know what you have. Pussy Toes is a great ground cover I have pictured here. I have recorded another video talking about winter sowing those seeds. And Pussy Toes is also a caterpillar host plant for the American Painted Lady and a nectar source for mining bees, sweat bees, cuckoo bees, and flies. If you have any questions, please email info at loudandwildlife.org and thank you for joining us.